Hello everyone, let me explain you multi-level parking automated parking system. As you can see, the driver steps in and once this goes inside, the feeder lifts it and places it in the radial arm. So once this is placed on the radial arm, it lifts the car upwards with the help of a stepper motor. It looks for a free space where exactly it is and once it has identified the free space, you could see the radial arm will rotate the car to place it in that compartment. So after that, you could see uh, the feeder will help the car to move inside and place it in the compartment and it comes down with the help of pneumatic actuators, it de-engages with the teeth and it places the car on the compartment and the feeder comes back. So this is the parking first half of the parking. So now how do we remove the car from the parking compartment to the exit? So the again the process follows as like the uh, feeder goes in which lifts the car, pull it back with the help of the stepper motor. Everything is programmed to servo motors and once this is done it comes down, looks for the exit way Accordingly, the radial, radial arm will rotate that and makes the entry uh, exit for the car. As you could see, the car is the other way around. So now to rotate it to the exact position, we have a rotating table placed outside the exit. So this rotates the entire car so that the driver can drift away the car across. Thank you. Multi-level automated parking system consists of lots of structural members. So designing those structural members is one of the key criteria for us. So to, that, to design that, we make use of SOLIDWORKS Weldments module. So for that, we have taken a rectangle, we dimension it across, we add cross members to this and we have to, as you could see, we are getting the mouse gestures option where you can have a shortcuts for line everything. So here we have to fully constrain the sketch. Why we have to do here the constraining is because once we do it here, we don't have to do the constraining in the drawing level. So sketching is done. I need to select for the appropriate structural member. Just click on the line. It adds me the structural member. So I want to place the structural member at the midpoint so where I can locate the profile where I have got so many piercing points so that I can pierce it at any point I want. So here you could see all the cross members is added. Here I'll select the midpoint for the selection of the profile. Say OK. And you could see there is a lot of interference happening which the one structural member is overlapping with the other. For that, to remove this, we make use of trim and extend option where SOLIDWORKS gives a very easy tool for removal of the structural members. The extra material can be removed by selecting the faces. Just click yes, you could see we get the required structural number. Once this is done, I'll save this as a chassis component. I go back to the drawing for giving a detailed drawing for this. You could see I can place various views here. This is my front view. I come to the downwards, I'll have the, I come to the right side, I have the right view. Come to the downwards, you have a bottom view. This is isometric view. You could see the dimensions automatically placed. These dimensions are taken from this sketch. So now here I have to generate a cut list stating what is the length of the profile member and what is the number of quantities. And to communicate this, we make use of e-drawings, the drawings generally to avoid the paperwork. We make use of e-drawings where we can communicate this drawing internally within the department. So where even I can add the comments for this, say suppose I want to add, I want to show the weld details here. So you just have to mention that and the required thing is done by the designer. So this
we know the multi level parking system comprises of lot of parts assemblies bought out items like servo motors and all to manage all this data is a very challenging process to overcome this process we have solidworks epdm which manages the complete design data within the department and the organization so where you could see i can define the name card for a particular mem mem particular weldment profile i can define as a document number which will be uh, unique for the entire uh, department and also once this has been manufactured designed the part number remains same here you could define manually input the weight date everything once this is done the designer can have the preview of this complete component where he can check in the list check in the design data once he has been done with the design process so he can add comments as well as new chassis design this will simultaneously update the vault you could see this is the preview and the data card once the person clicks on a particular design component he gets the complete document name part number description created by and what is the status of that under editing so he can even change the status and he can move it forward for the validation department that is other department as well so here the every user is given with an unique login id and all this login ids is been created by the admin image so once it is waiting for the approval as you could see the status this goes for the analysis department where they validate the complete design once this is done it goes for the manufacturing as we know the car feeder comprises of lot of kinematics which is driven through the actuators so to know what is the force required by the actuator we make use of solid works motion analysis the motion study so to define that we have applied the force of 2000 newton at the top which is general of car weight we apply a linear actuator movement for that with a speed of 100 mm per second and i just go for calculate which calculates the all the physical parameters correspondingly it gives the entire motion for that so here i go for results and plot where i have wide variety of results i want linear displacement along y direction for that member you could see we have the graph generated for that next i want the motor force required to lift that car here i get the motor force required so that we radial arm is one of the critical member in our entire design where it has to lift the car and accordingly it has to rotate and place the car in the compartment so to simulate that we have made use of the design where we have run and static study analysis we have defined the material for that and the pen is made up of brass material we define the contact sets for that as you could see there's a sliding contact between the pin and the hole we define the contacts for that select the hole and where you can define the friction coefficients and all if required say okay connections is been done next thing i have to generate one more contact set between that and the pin head and the face of that so this would be bonded contact as you could see there is no movement upon those two faces once this is done i have to fix the entire geometry this member is fixed to the guide base where it slides due to the help of the stepper motor so this is done we have to apply the force required that would be the car weight so that would be approximately 2 tons and we just mesh the model for the discretization process i want to refine the mesh in the selected regions so i can locally refine the mesh 
and give a default mesh to the entire body for that. So that the selected region will have the stress concentration level so that I can have more accurate results on the concentrated areas. So once this is done, you could see the results has been generated, the stress plot. We can see the stress is maximum at the pin and the joint. That is because of bonded contacts applied over there. And the FOS has been generated. And to communicate this to the other clients or internally within the departments, we can generate a detailed report as well with all the descriptions defined over there. The mesh details, the stress plots, FOS plots, everything. As we know to lift the uh, car, we make use of pneumatic actuator which is placed below the feeder. So this pneumatic actuator consists of pressurized fluid. So to know what is the force on the piston, we have to do a flow simulation study where we have to run the complete study, set the goals, we get the corresponding results as you could see here. So here we can calculate what is the fluid uh, interaction with respect to the piston head and we can have the corresponding goal as well. The maximum neutral. Let us start with a panel placed in a multi-level part. Go with a single line diagram, add a motor. Let us give the manufacturing details for the motor. You have to just take the help of in build library. We are looking for a large stronger motor and successfully added the motor to my single line diagram. Now we need to place a cable. We need to place cable in between the motor and terminal strip X1. Let us define the cable. We are looking for a 4 core cable. We have successfully included those cable in my single line diagram. Let us start with the power drawing of the same. Now we are looking for a 3 phase and protection wire. Let us place those wires and look for the 3 pole circuit breaker and 3 pole contact. For that, we are just accessing the library. Just placing the 3 pole circuit breaker and later associate this to Q4, which is already been defined in a single line diagram. Now, let us look for a 3 pole contactor and make the association with K4 contactor. Now we need to add one motor. Let us look for a motor and we are ready with the motor symbol. Let us place the symbol and associate this motor with the existing motor M5 defined a single line diagram. Done. Now we are looking for a terminal strip which is running in between the K4 contact and motor M5. So we are taking the X1 terminal strip. Generate all those terminal details. Now associate the cable core. Now associate cable cores. We have already defined this cable in my single line diagram W18 cable. We need to associate for associate cable cores. Now we are, we are going to use our Solidbox electrical macro. One drawing has already been drawn in the macro because next page of the PLC we need to step down the wall place. Let us look for a PLC library. Now we have already placed a drawing from PLC and we are just associating it. Go for a Q6 circuit breaker. This T3 transformer need to be associated with T1. Now phase referencing because these two wires are going to our next phase where PLC is placed. Look for a how just see how this uh, phase ref references happens. Just reference the protection wire and later we can reference the 12 volt wire with sort box understand the all voltages passing inside a wire or a cable. Now, let us open the same project in electrical sheet. So here we have a panel and we have already placed some of the component. Let us place some more components. 
start with deterministic backspin. Let us look for a terministic back three. We can give some distances also in between the terministic. This time we will give some 2mm distance. So these all things are getting inputted from our schematic. These things are all governed by this schematic. Let us insert the transformation model and some contactors K1 to K6. We need to give some gap in between those contactors. Let us give 30 mm gap in between those. We have successfully placed those motors. Now we look for a routing. Let's look for a route for, for all components. Oh. Now the prime M's routing is to find the wire length. So let us look for a wire length and automatic bill of material for a so where we can find the total wire length as well as all individual wire lengths. Let us generate the reports. You can see the total wire length in a red color. And to generate first article inspection reports, we make use of SolidWorks inspection, where it makes the reports automatic once the drawing is created. So here I can input my part number, part name, part revision, document name from the custom properties which has been defined while designing the part itself. So here I can define what in the dimension should be included or captured. Once this is done, automatic ballooning is done for the entire dimensions to whichever the inspection report has been generated accordingly. So here the best part is we have a color recognition. If it is within the limit, it shows as a green or if it is out of the limit, it shows as red. So here the quality department can easily identify the dimension. Coming to SOLIDWORKS Composer, we can generate an animation uh, interactive tool where we can have a complete visualization of the complete concept of how the car exactly is being placed and how it is being lifted. You could see the digger tool which is used to see the internal components where it helps us to have a better visualization by zooming in a particular region. Now you could see the car goes inside. Now the car comes out through the exit. You could see you can select the cars and you can drag through a translation window. So now it comes on the turning table and it can be rotated across so that there is a perfect